Hello, welcome back to this uh, bootstrap series. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through the basics of building and implementing a carousel using bootstrap. So let's get started by going over to the bootstrap documentation. And I'm going to go down to components and select carousel. Okay, so it'd be well worth your while reading through this uh, just once to get a general feel and idea of what's going to happen. I'm going to be utilizing this as reference as we go through this tutorial. So you'll be able to read up on some of the things that I'm implementing uh, in code. So first of all, I'm going to just utilize this first sample. So we'll go through most of these um, examples. Um, so I'm going to copy that and you can see this is just going to be a slider. At the moment, there's three images that's going to slide. Um, so we'll go back to my code. I'm inside the index page here. And I'm just going to put this code, this carousel code, just below my container. You can update your comments if you want to. So what we've got here is a, a div, a carousel. And inside of this uh, carousel, we've got um, some divs here, which uh, includes the images. So these are the three images. You'll notice that the SRC, there's just dot, dot, dot. So the images haven't actually been included yet. So if we refresh the page, this is what we're going to see. You will see this move across uh, shortly. So it is working. Now, if yours isn't working, um, I'll say this now, uh, if yours doesn't work in a minute, it might mean that you've not or you've deleted uh, some of these dependencies down here because in order to get this working we're going to need some of this uh, JavaScript in place uh, like I said to get this uh, carousel working so make sure that's there if you're following this series um, you wouldn't have touched th that down there so uh, now let's go back to our con uh, carousel here and now let's add some images to this carousel so to add some images, I'm going, to, I'm going to be just using some placeholders. So I've gone over to placeholder.com. You can use uh, any other placeholder service you like. Um, and now I'm just going to select the, uh, this code here and put it into the dot, dot, dots of my code. So I've changed my code already. So I've already copied and pasted it. So I'm selecting 150 by uh, 50. So I'm going to do that for all of them. OK, so uh, let's just refresh my page. So this is probably one of the trickiest things with utilizing a carousel, um, having things uh, displayed correctly. So um, by default, or as per instructions at placeholder.com, you define the width and the height of the image. Now, let's not forget uh, that here we've got width 100 percent this is going to be so what's happening here is that this is getting overridden this sizing of this image is getting overridden by bootstrap so this is why it's appearing as uh, 100 percent of your container remember that this is inside of this container here which is what, 1100 and whatever uh, so this image is now being scaled to 100 percent and it's just being scaled upwards. So uh, that's why you get this shape here. Now, if I were just to remove that and just select 150, that's going to make an image of 150 by 150 height and width. And this is why you're going to see something like that. Um, and obviously, it's just been scaled up again. And that's why it's still square, because it's just been scaled up the image. So by putting in 50 here, um, that will produce a nice kind of size for us on the page. But to further understand that a little bit more, if I right click and uh, right click and uh, inspect, I can see uh, here, for example, um, if I were to change the this code here width um, to nothing here, It's already been applied. What I'm doing? Sorry, <laughs> here. Sorry, um, here. Um, you can see it, the image goes back to the 150 by 50, the original size, and you can see now that 
Bootstrap is overriding that with 100%, and that's why it's just being scaled. So 100% and auto, it's being scaled up. So that can um, be useful for us when we're just building our web page initially. But to then actually create a, an image that's going to fit in there, we need to think about um, how to build that image. So if we were to actually now build an image for this or create an image for this, if I click here, here, you can see the uh, the size here. It's 1,110 by 370. So that's the, the size of it. So if I was going to build an image for this, I would build an image of that size. And it would then be scaled as you move down. It will keep its scale. Um, so there'd be no need to change this code at all because it will always be 100%. So that's how I would uh, design. That's one way um, you could get a nice image to fit inside of that. So actually build an image of the right size, so 1110 by 370, and that fit in there nicely. So with that out of the way, we now have some images in here. Um, so the next thing is to go back to uh, the carousel bootstrap documentation and see what we can do next. In the next example, we have some controls. <clears throat> so left and right controls. Now we don't need to copy uh, this whole example here. Um, what's happened here is that we just extend our existing code. So I've copied and pasted these two links here, which represents the left and right arrows. And I just need a place where they need to go. So here I can just follow the divs. You can see I've got these outer divs here and you've got the carousel inner. So they're placed just outside the carousel inner divs. So I'm going to put that there. <clears throat> and you'll notice that it's trying to call this ID called carousel example controls. So I just need to copy and paste that right there. And that matches that up nicely. So now that should work. So let's give that a go. So back and forward, obviously all the images are the same. Um, yeah, and it's working absolutely fine. Just to recap so far, we have the carousel outer div. Oh, for our carousel and then we have the inner carousel which includes the images so we've got a div for the carousel item and then an, an image and now we've included some controls which go out of the outside of the carousel inner div so we've got a previous and a next um, icon on our carousel now let's just assume you don't want to use uh, these icons and you wanted to change it to something like this for example use your own icon well uh, what we do have uh, is the <coughs> icons.getbootstrap.com so from the the home page click on icons and then from here we've got some <coughs> free to use icons or an icon library um, that we can utilize of course you may have your own icons you want to use so uh, just select one of these. I'm going to go for this right here. And then this will produce the SVG code you need for it. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into right here. So I'm going to get rid of this span. Uh, which that's basically the icon that you can see right now. So I paste my SVG right in there. And now what you should see on the page is this new icon. So there we go. So that's how to kind of change your own icons if you want to, still utilizing the, the bootstrap facilities. So we're now going to expand our carousel to include captions. So you can see the example we've got right here. So we've still got the icons um, and we've got a nice little caption down here for each slide. 
and um, we've also got this nice navigation area right down here so uh, let's develop further um, and include some of these features first of all I'm just going to select control and Z and uh, just take me back to just take me back to the uh, the previous icon for my slider there we go so let's add some code <coughs> uh, looking at this example <coughs> we've got the label right here so we're going to copy that and put it into our item so underneath our image now I'm just going to get rid of I'm just going to get rid of the other two items here uh, so this item and this item. So there's only going to be one item in my carousel for now <coughs> while I'm working with it. So there we go. So our, our label is now there. So all I have is uh, one item in my carousel at the moment. So you can see that that instantly works absolutely fine. Um, of course, now what you could do, uh, obviously we could change the, these type of parameters so we can make some a larger font if we wanted to or if you wanted to expand that further you could add a class to this equals uh, text one for example and then you could go back into your CSS dot text one and then you could add add your style here so font uh, font size 12 make it really small if you wanted to so you could definitely uh, do that if you wanted to uh, and that will be a way of expanding or customizing further so I just take that out and take this class out so we're just going to stick with the the h2 uh, so that's rather large now obviously I've only got one element here <coughs> so that's my first slide label now obviously I just need to now copy and paste this to make uh, some more slides now I'm just going to change this to obviously second and this one is going to be my third slide <coughs> now I'm just going to remove active okay so now I should have three slides excellent one two three <laughs> no it's not working um, what have I done wrong? Okay, uh, for some reason that's changed back. So example controls need to be the same there. So uh, let's see that in action. So we've got a second label and third label. So that was a, an easy process to get the labels in place. Now let's have a look at developing the uh, this uh, these indicators carousel indicators um, so we know which uh, slide we're currently on um, so you can see in the code here we still got this uh, um, ordered list so I'm going to copy that we can see where it's going to go in terms of the code so under here I'm just going to place the code right there now uh, carousel indicators uh, the target is carousel example caption so let's see if this is working one so you can see at the moment this is not working and that is because uh, we're now referencing uh, this ID differently so I need to copy that put it up here and then down here I also now need to change this because we're using a different ID so that's now in place uh, so let's go back and make sure that that works so first slide second slide third slide there we go so we've got the example working so um, we, we've built <coughs> uh, from this simple example you can see that we've added um, this section at the bottom here um, sorry this section here so first of all we added some 
uh, links on the left hand and right hand side. We just needed to make sure that this uh, was the same as the ID of the carousel. And then that was the first task. We then expanded this further and we've added some labels or some information um, per slide. We did that and then the last thing we achieved was we've added some carousel indicators for each slide. Now of course if you now add a new slide, uh, so let's just copy this item here, we just need to add that item, obviously change the image if you want to, and this is going to be the fourth So with that in place, I now need to add right here. Notice that these <coughs> data slides start at zero, which represents the first uh, slide. So I change that to three. So now I go back to my carousel and I should now have four indicators. And there we go. So that would be the easy way to extend your carousel. For the next example, I've gone ahead <coughs> and accessed this website and <coughs> I've copied and pasted uh, the code uh, for some images because I wanted to move away from those grey images. So you can see here that I've included um, a different image per slide here. And how this works is that <coughs> you can pick an image from that website um, by ID. So 237, 238, 239 and so on. So those are the image IDs and this is the uh, the width and the height again. So I've added that into my code and <coughs> you can now see that I've got a pixelated but um, images that are different. So another effect that you can include is this carousel fade. So if I just copy that and go back into my carousel and change or add the class up here uh, instead of having this slide left to right we can have a fade option there we go so <coughs> that's just two uh, well, that's another example of a different way of introducing each slide another feature we can control is how fast these slides move so going back into the the carousel documentation uh, as you go down, um, we've got a bit too far, the interval. So what we need to do here really is just add um, a new attribute to uh, the carousel item uh, area container element. And we can do that. Obviously, this is the first one. So I just add uh, one being, I think 5000 is the default. So one is really quick. So I'm just going to add this now to all my slides. And we'll see what happens. Oh, refresh the page. Did I save it? I think I did. Oh. That's a, so there we go. Um, I think that was just a, an issue there with cache, cache, however you want to describe it. Um, so you can see how quickly that's going to move. Um, obviously, if you want that slower, then it's just a case of increasing uh, this number. Okay, so that gives you an overview, hopefully, of utilizing and implementing uh, a simple carousel into your uh, WordPress, <laughs> sorry, into your Bootstrap uh, project. Um, so let's just scale that down so you can see that how that scales down. There we go. So notice also, uh, one point I didn't make and point out, the text disappears when it gets to this small size. Now, if you want the text to continue um, at that small size, if you remove this uh, D none, so if I remove that now from, from each slide and refresh, 
you can see now that the text has now uh, reappeared. So it's probably a good idea to, to remove that because at this small um, size, it's probably difficult with a phone to, to actually utilize that. But at the same time, um, you might still find that or you might still want that feature included onto yours because it does give you a nice um, label for the image. So it depends how you want to start your page. But that's how to control that element. So hopefully that gives you a, a basic overview of starting to utilize and implement carousels uh, with Bootstrap.